There are a number of different packages for plotting in Julia, and there is probably one to suit your needs and tastes. In this tutorial, I introduce you to plots.jl package. There is a rationale behind choosing plots.jl package for this tutorial. The most important reason for choosing plots.jl package is it talks to many of the other plotting packages. Plots is a high-level plotting package that interfaces with other plotting packages, which here are referred to as backends. Those so-called backends act as graphics engines that produce the graphics. Each of these is also a standalone plotting package and can be used separately. But the advantage of using plots as the interface is, as you will see, a simpler and consistent interface. To get you up and running with the plus.jl Julia package, first of all, we have to open up the VS Code in the project directory. And after that, we have to open up the Julia repo. For opening the Julia repo, we'll use the dash dash project equal to dot. As you know, dot refers to the current directory. After getting inside the repo, we hit the right square bracket to go into the package mode. Then we type add plots and wait for the plots package to be installed. It takes roughly 10 to 20 minutes to install the package because it has to compile the package for the first time. And uh, if you have a low spec computer, please go and pour a coffee and wait for the installation to finish. I fast forward the installation process. After installing the plus package, we'll use the using keyword to be able to use it in the Julia language. To be able to plot anything, we have to define a couple of functions. First of all, I'll define the fx function and I use the plot to plot the f on the interval 0 to 2 pi. You can see the result of the plot in the VS Code pane at the right side. What if I want to plot more than one function? I actually can pass a list to the first argument of the plot function. For this, I define another function called gx and pass the g function as an argument to the plot function inside the list. I can also add a couple of other options to the plot function. For example, I can pass a title and uh, I call it f and g plot and I can also add x label and y label to the plot function. As you can see, the x and y labels are added to the horizontal and vertical axis. You can also modify the line width of the plot. We'll pass the keyword argument line width and change the value to something more than one. If you notice, the plot looks a little bit ugly. Is there any way to change the look and feel of the plot? Of course there is. We can actually use the plot themes package. For that, I will go to the package mode in the Julia repo by hitting the right square bracket and add the plot themes package. After the installation is finished, we can use the package. But before that, I will explain something about the plot themes package. Here is the plot themes package GitHub page. Here we can find the information that we need to be able to use the package effectively. They have explained how we can use the package by adding it to the environment. They have also provided a list of themes that we can use, for example, Dark, Juno, ggplot to default and and the list goes on and on. Here's the line that you need to be able to use the theme provided by plot themes package. I copy this line for usage later. A couple of different plots for every theme is provided in this page. Now we paste the line we have copied from the GitHub page. But before that we have to import the plot themes package. Now I paste the line I copied, but I remove the keyword arguments because I don't need them for this tutorial. And actually change the first argument to something like Juno as provided in the plot themes GitHub page. Then I run the plot command again. As you see, the customized theme is working. I can also change the theme to something else like bright and test it again. Now we talk about different types of plots. First of all, let me rerun the commands that I've already used as an example. To use the scatter plot, we'll use the same setting but change the plot function to a scatter. Instead of getting a smooth lines, we get a series of dots with gaps in between them. What if you want to plot a histogram? For that, we'll need a variable called x, for example, which contains a series of numbers here from minus 20 to 20 and the steps 0.1 in between them. And I'll define two functions x squared and cosine x and I'll plot them again I'll use the LW keyword which stands for line width again you can see the results in the VS Code pane and assign some labels to them but if I want to plot the histogram I will pass the y2 and y1 as the first arguments to histogram functions here I have also passed a label and a third argument called alpha Alpha controls the transparency of our plot. If I change the alpha to 1, the plot becomes less transparent 
and darker. But if I change it to a value less than 1, it becomes more transparent. For plotting a three-dimensional surface, I'll define two ranges, x and y variables, and a Gaussian function. To actually get the type of the variables x and y, we can use the type of function which returns set range length. It gives us the information about the type of the variable. I also define a variable called gradient and assign the value returned by the cgrad function. cgrad function takes a list of colors and actually we can see the effect of the gradients on the surface plots. As a result of running the line, you will see a color bar returned. And after that, we will pass to the surface function x, y and the function f and the color gradient as a keyword argument and we will get the surface that we want. Same as the other plots, I can assign x label, y label and title to my surface plot. We can also use the plot3d function to plot parametric variables. Here the range t represents time and x and y variables depend on t. We pass x, y and t to plot3d function, specify the line width, the color and the legend. If we put the legend false, we will not get the legend information as you will see in the plot pane. Now I change the legend to true, the legend is added to the plot. If you found this tutorial helpful, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Also, I constantly make new Julia programming tutorials, so check out my channel for more information. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you all later.